Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the UW-Milwaukee r and BSN information session on the UW Flexible Option Innovations with Capstone. My name is Nicole Simonson. I am the program director of the BSN completion at UWM. A little housekeeping before we get started, your audio and video are automatically muted right now. I'd like to draw your attention to the view icon on the upper right corner. You will see three options. If you choose speaker view, you will have the best viewing experience of the event today. The chat is also open and we welcome you to use it to ask questions or make comments. We will get to all questions at the end of the presentation. All right, so good morning. Um, here is today's agenda and topics that will be discussed. We will be highlighting our RNWSM program, uh, more specifically capstone challenges we've been facing, the update with the new ACN essentials, a little bit about competency-based education, and then the changes we've made in the capstone. And we'll open it up to Q&A after. All right, thank you for attending and your interest in the UWM R and BSN completion program. Today, we um, are talking about more specifically the FLEX capstone. Your commitment to BSN prepared nurses is essential. Having BSN prepared nurses in professional practice, it um, helps in improving patient safety outcomes, improve work environments, is a way of achieving magnet status, shows a higher competency in practice, communication, leadership, and many more characteristics. Additionally, many ADNs and diploma nurses find little benefit in receiving their BSN. They feel it is a checklist of to-dos in their career advancement. They are uncertain on whether this will change their practice. Through our program, they critically reflect upon their prior knowledge and work experience in order to grow, develop, and evolve. Throughout their journey, the nurse recognizes the benefits of obtaining their BSN. Our goal today is to, well, today and moving forward is, and always, <laughs> sorry, is provide a quality RN to BSN program that meets the needs of practicing nurses while also meeting the needs of the healthcare organizations. Transforming Capstone into an experiential learning experience is what UWM is excited to share today. Students will do this in their role as an employee, eliminating the clinical component. Today's session will provide you with the rationale. Just a little bit about our program, if you're not familiar with it already. Uh, UWM r and BSN Completion Program provides ADNs the ability to receive their bachelor's degree in three modes of learning. We have learning in face-to-face, -face, a traditional online. I apologize, that is my sassy dog right there. Um, traditional online through BSN at home and the UW flexible option through competence-based education. Each model supports the student. I'm just going to move her real quick. I apologize. I'm sorry about that distraction um, that normally doesn't happen. But as I was saying, we have three modes of learning, face-to-face, -face, a traditional online, and UW flexible option through competency-based education. Each mode supports the student learner in meeting their individual needs. Our program is designed to build upon the student's previous nursing degree, promoting professional development, increased awareness, of cultural, political, economic, and social issues. Today, we'll focus on that UW Flexible option, the competency-based education, which provides online self-paced and self-directed manner of learning. 
Our students are from diverse settings ranging from bedside, managers, educators, public health, clinics, informatics, donor network, and many more settings. In our program, the nurses see an immediate return on their investment, as do their employers. What the RNWS program does is bridge skills and theory. Additionally, I'd like to note that we are accredited by the Commissions of Collegiate Nursing Education and approved by the State Board of Nursing. I wanted to talk a little bit about our students and you know, the fact that they are adult learners. They are not our traditional students or new freshmen. Their journey looks much different. Oftentimes they are encouraged through their employer to pursue their BSN or even required to do so. Others are pursuing it as part of growth and development or a stepping stone in their journey. These are nurses who are actively practicing and also juggling personal life and their education. The work-life balance conundrum has always existed, but has had additional challenges most recently. By tailoring our program to the adult learner, it allows our students to build upon what, we, what they already know and do in practice. What students learn today, they immediately apply in their practice tomorrow. This is exciting because they're still working within their scope of practice, but are expanding upon what they apply and do within practice. Some of the challenges that we have noted, um, we are aware of the challenges brought on by the pandemic, such as less nurses completing their bachelors. They are dealing with staffing, overtime, balancing personal barriers. Healthcare systems are feeling the strain as well. We all know. All of this led, has led to difficulties securing clinical placements and preceptors for our students. Additionally, nurses are having trouble stepping away from their practice roles to complete their coursework. They are truly being stretched thinner and thinner than ever before. This combined with the AACN's new essentials has prompted us to look at our curriculum differently. Specifically, Brandon Jones in 2022 wrote how nursing schools are being encouraged to hone in on innovative and learning strategies, creating opportunities for expert experiential learning. These are the latest um, changes for FLEX, our approaches that are evidence-based, supported by many nursing organizations um, nationally recognized. The focus on competency-based education and movement from a formal clinical to an experiential learning and assessment is necessary. This is a little bit about the AACN essentials. Um, outlined are the core competencies for professional nursing education. The new essentials were developed by key stakeholders and reference of three landmark reports noted by AACN the Future Task Force Report, the AACM Vision for Academic Nursing White Paper, and the IOM's The Future of Nursing 2020 to 2030, charting a path to achieve equity. There are some key pieces to the new essentials, a focus on transformative change to nursing education and profession by creating innovative and transformative learning. This leads to a change in basic assumptions to bridge the gap between theory and practice. AACN focused on creating some influence in social determinants of health and leadership. The medium to promote, transform, and innovate is through competency-based education, which is something Flex has already been doing, but now we want to take a deeper dive. The 10 domains provide the framework, context, and structure of CBE, and the competencies are geared towards learning outcomes that are observable and measurable. Again, bridging that gap between theory and practice will aid in a smooth and successful transition to practice for graduates. This is the definition of CBE articulated by the AACN. Um, CBE is focused on outcomes, emphasis on students' ability, redu reducing time-based training while promoting student-learner-centeredness. Student just take a moment here for you to look at the definition. 
you're going to be hearing this term quite a bit in the future if you haven't been already. Next slide. CBE is known to increase student motivation, engage in a deeper, more meaningful thought, therefore creating constructive and productive learning. Students also bring their own experiences to the table. This prepares students to engage in complex situations within professional practice. It also stimulates lifelong learning within the student. This slide shows um, how students demonstrate mastery um, of competency in our program. Students must reach mastery through engagement in real world situations, collaboration with interprofessional teams, reflecting upon all experiences, and it's all action and demonstration. Their demonstrating mastery means that they must achieve a 79% or higher on all work in the program. So every single assignment or activity that they submit must be a 79% before they can proceed on. So none of our students um, receive less than that by before they complete the program. This is high level, this demonstrates high level of excellence and competence, and it really stages from a simple to complex. A little bit about the capstone. Prior to this fall of 22, students completed a final capstone as a clinical component in their place of employment. This requires 60 hours of clinical time outside of their employee role where they engage in quality improvement initiatives that is mutual that have been mutually beneficial for the site and the student. Completion of clinical health requirements, onboarding, and student orientation has been required. This approach costs additional time and money for by all and is one part of the program that remained a vestige of previous models of nursing education. Now that we have been pushed by AACN and others to transform nursing education into a fully competency-based model, it was time to relook at how nursing does capstone experiences at the level of entry to professional practice. Experiential learning also referred to immersion to practice, work-based learning, high impact practices, facilitate active involvement in workplace initiatives. In many cases, our students are already engaging in leadership and quality improvement at their workplace. They will take that level of engagement and apply it to the theory within their, their courses as well as in their employee role in the form of additional soft skills or skills such as leadership, involvement in committees, unit-based initiatives, and many more opportunities. Additionally, they reflect upon these learnings both in the course and within practice. They'll be able to critically assess what, what went well, the whys, others' perspectives, what could have gone better, and while considering how to manage similar situations in the future while educating others. This allows the students to engage in authentic opportunities at their place of employment while partnering with their healthcare team. Fostering a partnership between our healthcare partners and UWM creates an environment of innovation. It allows students to look at their practice from another lens one where they promote EBP and best practices within their clinical practice, letting them reflect on their own. But with the support of others in their journey of growth and development, our students are already engaging in these types of experiences and have been for years. For example, an ADM prepared nurse who works in your organization learns, about, learns in a course about an evidence-based practice falls prevention. The nurse brings this new information up to their manager or leadership at work. They um, want to promote change within their place of employment. So they know that it will improve patient safety and outcomes on their unit. They, um, based on the EBP literature and conversations that they have at their work site, the nurse plans to put forth a pilot on falls assessments on their unit. 
This NERS presents education on how to utilize this tool and why it is considered best practice. The unit finds improvement in patient safety and outcomes and it's rolled out to all inpatient units. This scenario can occur outside of a formal clinical experience. In this instance, the nurse pursuing their R and BSN self-initiated an opportunity based on what they were learning within the R and BSN program. Additionally, all courses in this program encourage students to select topics that are relative to their professional practice and setting to share what they have learned and with their coworkers and managers, and to do and to promote change based on the literature. This is done throughout the program. These experiences become meaningful and impactful not for not only the student, but for the organization they work for. Here are some benefits that um, I'd like to highlight with you. Use of CBE and experiential learning leads to nurses who have increased confidence in their ability to successfully perform ANA scopes and standards of practice and gain additional skills. So um, it has been noted in the literature that employed nurses who engage in um, experiential learning at their work site have increased employee engagement, increased employee retention, increased satisfaction, and vested in their lifelong learning. This leads to a better trained workforce, increased success in professional practice, and the ability on actual outcomes rather than the completion of tasks. Healthcare settings are supporting and embracing the learning process. In summary, our stu students, your nurses, are at the forefront of healthcare. They are engrossed in practice at your organizations. They are the eyes and ears of everything going on. We both, us UWM and you, um, want to increase active eng engagement in the workplace, advocate for evidence-based practice, promote change through formal channels in the workplace, and role model best practices. That was the end of my presentation, and I'd like to have an opportunity to open this up for questions, as I'm sure that there are some questions about what this all entails and what it means for your organization. Anyone's welcome to put a question in chat or raise your hand. There's a question in chat. Did I miss how the requirements for us have changed, like the number of hours? Sure. So with them engaging throughout the continuum of the R and BSM program and within the capstone, they are engaging in opportunities as they present themselves in the workplace. So there isn't any formal requirement of hours. It's just them bringing back this information to their course on what they're learning and sharing um, with their peers and within the course. There's another question in chat. Are the competencies relevant to nurses working in support or non-patient care, such as education, informatics, employee health, et cetera? Excellent question. Yes, our, our students are currently working in diverse settings such as those and our program outcomes and course outcomes um, really are, we are to meet the general nurse. And so we tailor the activities to the nurse. So we have the student or the nurse um, pull from topics and situations within their employee role. So specific situations that are occurring at that moment um, in time is where they focus their work so that our students are not all presenting on the same topic or 
um, doing their research on evidence-based practice on the same topic. Nicole, this is Patty Gedimer. Hi. I, I, um, I was curious about how long it, uh, the program generally takes. I know it's self-paced, uh, but how long, uh, how long will it take an employee to get through it? And then I, just as an aside, I really like the option or what you're looking at of having people work within their organization and make improvements right there. Uh, I think that's more palatable for people to do something that they will um, be able to help the organization they're committed to. So I love that, thanks. Thank you. So um, typically the FLEX program um, can take students depending on the pace that they wanna go at anywhere from 12 months to two years. We have in the more recent times have had students completed as fast as six months. They can um, take as many courses as they want. We have a rolling subscription period where the students can enroll in courses at any given month. We start a new enrollment of the course. And um, so they can decide at the pace that they want. And if for some reason, many of them, like during the midst of the pandemic, they wanted to take a pause so that they could balance things better. They took a pause and when things were improved for them or more manageable, they returned back. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. There is another question. Will these students be placing formal requests for placements with a preceptor? No, the plan is that the students are actively seeking out their opportunities right in their work setting. They, that would not require or necessitate any placements as they're doing it within their employee role and within their nursing scope of practice. So uh, just to clarify that, just to make sure I kind of understand how it fit in is they would work with their leadership or this Patty again, work with their leadership or something to set up a program or with their quality department just to get coaching or how do people typically go about that? Right, so they would start with um, the point of, um, they would talk to their direct leader and say that they have um, an interest in increasing their engagement at work. So participating committees or with the educator helping with audits on their unit, whatever it might look like or what the needs are at that time. As, you're, as most organizations are encouraging nurses to be actively involved in those roles to begin with, this is their opportunity to step into those roles. And we will encourage our students to do that from the very beginning. And most of it will be for them to just get exposure, see the inner workings of their organization, how they can contribute and help at their place of work. So oftentimes those are done outside of the time of their work hours, um, additional time that they provide to the organization. So it's basically whatever fits the needs of the organization, what is the focus at that time is where they will more than likely contribute their work. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. There's another question in chat. Will you be sending out costs, et cetera, to us to share with our staff? This sounds like a really great option for us. Absolutely, we have information. Um, we have a variety of different information. You'll receive this recording as well as we can send out information regarding our program. Um, Flex is the program that we highlight highlighted today, but we also have the traditional online, which meets students in a different way that maybe want a little bit more peer engagement and engagement with their instructor uh, through online discussions, and it's more traditional semester based. So we'll provide information on both of those options. Currently, the face to face mode is not active as it has not been something of desire since the start of the pandemic. Uh, but we'll provide you with all of those options. And um, depending on the pace that they go, it could really um, be cost savings by using our program. And if they optimize on their um, options with their tuition reimbursement through their employer.
a comment from Tracy Blair. I would be happy to add any marketing tools to my weekly newsletter. Please feel free to send this to me and then the email address is included. So I'll note that in our notes. Thank you. Sounds great. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, I would um, be happy to receive that as well. Um, hopefully we can kind of move in that direction. Thanks. Are there any additional questions if I was like missing the gaps or pieces or to put this all together for anybody? Nicole, I was just wondering if you have any um, documents that would kind of outline what the, the expectations are for the students so that I could share that with our nurse scientists. I know they've been very interested in um, being involved in knowing what, what different students are doing in, in terms of projects and um, um, evidence-based practice or process improvement. So is there anything that kind of summarizes what um, the criteria are, or kind of guidelines for what the students need to do for yes, the project? Ab absolutely. We have some documents that we share with the students that coach them along the way on what we encourage them to do at their place of work and also um, some suggested resources and support that might be available at their place of work for them. So we can share some of that information as well. Gina in chat just pointed out that we'll have a recording available as a follow-up and everyone's welcome to, to please share as they wish. We are really excited about this venture. Our students are really excited about this. Like I said earlier, there's many of our students that are already engaging in these roles and they get to showcase them in the courses and already um, take pride in the work they've already done or currently are doing. And then those that haven't been actively engaged do get actively engaged. And many of them say by the end of the program, how excited they are to be able to carry on in these roles and capacities at their place of work. I really do appreciate everybody attending today. Um, I'm here for any further questions. Uh, one more, another comment popped up, PDF handouts that we can post on our internet works best for getting it out to our staff. Thanks for the presentation. Thank you for attending, Renee. We'll definitely get information out. So excited. Nicole, I just have a quick question. So um, the program is called UW Flex. So is this also being offered at like Oshkosh, Madison, other nursing things or is this just because it's not noted as Milwaukee? Um, so yeah, our FLEX program is basically a collaborative between the UW uh, system and UWM. UWM, the College of Nursing, fully, fully supports the program with the curriculum and the instruction. And then the UW system, also known as Extended Campus, helps with supports for the program in maintaining some of the um, intricacies of the flexibility components. So this is different than the one where you're referring to the collaboration between many UW campuses. So the one that um, where they're at, multi they could be at any UW campus essentially. That one is the BSN at home, the traditional online forum. And UWM is also part of that too. Thanks.